Hello and welcome to session seven of programming from A to Z. And the topic for this session is generating text with something called a context-free grammar. So what I want to do in this video is just talk a little bit about the broader topic of what a grammar is, and then specifically what a context-free grammar is, and look at some different, and, and give you an overview of what code libraries and algorithms you might use to generate text with a context-free grammar. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna just move into the next video and actually start to implement a grammar to generate stories and text or poems or whatever, and you will see um, how you can do that. So if you want to just jump to the code, you can skip to the next video. But here I'll give you kind of an overview. So if you're interested in the topic, first of all, so what is a grammar? This is a page about grammars by at Matt Might on Twitter. I find it a useful overview of grammars. I'll link to it in this uh, video's description. And Matt Might makes the point which is grammar, you can think of it as the language of languages, right? So we have language, but how do you describe the syntax and structure of a language? What's the language for a language? And that's what a grammar is. And if I were to scan through this page, there's you know diff Bacchus now form grammar and Bacchus now extended Bacchus now. There's all these different syntax syntaxes. How do you say? How, what's the plural of syntax? Somebody will write in the comments for me. Um, and a variety of ways of expressing grammars for a language. One thing I'll point out to you. Um, whoops, is um, this is a grammar. Uh, programming languages are made actually with this thing called a context-free grammar. So I haven't described what a context-free grammar is, but you can see here, this is a context-free grammar for C++ statements. So you can see what is a statement could be if expression, then statement, or if expression, statement, else statement. What is a statement? A statement could be do statement while expression. So this idea of fitting things in to a grammar, a defined structure. So Let's think of, um, okay, and so there are a variety of kind of uh, the sort of seminal work on grammars. Um, you can read, I'll link to the uh, uh, paper by Noam Chomsky, uh, where you can think of grammars divided into four categories. So there's this kind of unrestricted grammar, type zero, which is just basically everything. <laughs> uh, English language is a like, highly sophisticated, complex grammar. Um, but there are also context-sensitive grammars, which I think will actually make a lot more sense once I describe what a context-free grammar is. Um, so there's a bunch of different kinds of grammars, and I encourage you to explore this hierarchy of grammars and think more deeply about grammars beyond what I'm going to do in these videos. But the classic grammar that can be used to create um, uh, generative text um, is a context-free grammar. So let me talk to you a little bit about, in general, what a context-free grammar is. Uh, maybe we'll look, and then I'll show you some tools uh, that allow you to um, generate with context-free grammars. And then I'll just start to write in code. So a context-free grammar is made up by, um, I'm going to say, you could, we could use different terms for these things, but there's an alphabet or there's a set of valid elements in the language. Like you can only say the, cat, you know, meow, and puppy. <laughs> right? Those, that's the alphabet of the language. It only has four possible words. Right? Um, the, uh, there are also, in a grammar, there, some of these are what are known as terminal, and some of these are known as non-terminal. So the alphabet is terminal and non-terminal. Now, this is probably a bad idea, <laughs> but I'm going to just use like sort of generic characters for this alphabet. So let's pretend that we have an alphabet which is uh, A, B, and C. And those are, this is the alphabet. And these are non-terminal characters. I don't know what I put these little quotes around them for, for no particular reason. And then we also have um, terminal characters, and those will be uh, D, E and F. Okay, so these are terminal characters. Now, the grammar will also have production rules. A production rule is a rule, and these you can also refer to as like replacement rules. So, um, a production rule is a rule by which if you have a certain character, like A, what does that get replaced with? Let's say A gets replaced with B. D, E, and B gets replaced with A, F, and C gets replaced with A. So this now could make up the entire grammar. And I kind of hate what I'm doing here, and I'm doing it anyway. And I knew this morning when I was having the same discussion that I shouldn't do it this way, because I think this makes so much more sense if I have content here, right? 
But let's look at it, let's just think about it in the abstract sense. And as I start to go through code examples, we'll get to, um, we'll, you'll, I think it might, if this is confusing to you when I have some actual content, it might click in for you. Okay, so these are the production rules. So now what I need is, this is sometimes referred to as an axiom or maybe a starting sentence. But what I need, I'm gonna call it an axiom just to be formal here. What I need is an axiom. So what do I start with? So let's say I start with um, the axiom A, C. So what that means is I start with A, C, and then I start to go through my replacement rules. <laughs> what am I doing here? A becomes B, D, E. So this becomes B, D, E. And C becomes A. Now we do this again. B becomes A, F. And D is terminal, so D stays as D. E is terminal, so E stays as E. And A becomes what? B, D, E. So I could keep going. Now, eventually, I didn't do this very smartly because my non-terminal non characters um, all, all get replaced with something that is also non-terminal. So this is kind of this, this way, this, and this is known as an expansion. I'm expanding out the grammar by iteratively running these replacement rules over and over again. And when we write the code for this, you'll see this happens with this fancy thing called a recursive algorithm. But you can see here that, um, that, um, that this is going to go until infinity. But if I were to do this in a slightly different way, for example, I'm gonna show you a grammar created by um, Alison Parrish uh, for a class that sh um, she teaches called Reading and Writing Electronic Text. I encourage you to check out those examples. A lot of my code is ported from her code in Python. Um, and you can see here, here are, uh, here are the sets of production rules. Sentence becomes noun, noun phrase, verb phrase. Or a sentence becomes interjection, noun phrase, verb phrase. A noun phrase becomes determiner noun, or determiner noun, that verb phrase. So you can see these are all the possible, and these are all non-terminal, um, non-terminal uh, elements of the grammar. And then here you can see, um, here are some terminal elements. For example, an interjection could be oh, or my, or wow, or damn. <laughs> sort of like cursed on my YouTube stream. Um, did I just call it my YouTube stream? That's also a little bit weird. Uh, the terminer is this, that, or the. So if I were to just go to the example, I'm gonna not bother looking at the code, but we can see here if I go to um, week eight, a context-free grammar reader, this example generates, is this the right one that I was looking at? Yes, this example generates sentences based on that grammar. Let me move this a little bit over and zoom in here. And you can see, wow, the bald restaurant sneezes. My, the smug corsage, computes that overstaffed corsage. This corsage inter inter interprets the blue restaurant. So there's a lot of corsages <laughs> in this particular generative system. So it's interestingly enough, typically, what you might use a grammar for I'm over here now, and I kind of want to leave this because I think I want to refer to this later. What you might use a grammar for is you have an existing sentence. Maybe you have a bit of code. Like, for example, what if I go to um, a code editor? I'm jumping around like a crazy person here. Let's see if this works with CodePen. Um, I'm going to go to CodePen, and I'm going to make a new pen, and I'm going to say something like, if uh, um, for var i equals zero, let's make this bigger. Uh, um, I is less than I plus plus. Now, where's my JavaScript linter? To, ah, here we go. Here, look at this, unexpected token. So look at this. How does the code environment understand that the semicolon is unexpected and shouldn't be there? So normally, not normally, but one way of using a grammar, and in this case a context-free grammar, is to look at an existing sentence like this block of code and see if it fits, right? The reverse. See if it fits the structure of the grammar going in reverse. And if it doesn't, right, then there's an error like, oh, there's got to be something here. Like, let's look at it without the parentheses. Um, we can see here, right, unexpected token. So it's a lot of unexpected token. It's getting some new thing that doesn't fit, doesn't fit the grammar. So this is one way that grammars are used to evaluate text. And that might be something that you explore. But what I'm exploring is the reverse, which is saying, here is the grammar. Start with a sentence, start with an S, 
Turn that in to either noun phrase, verb phrase, or interjection noun phrase, verb phrase, and let's see what we get. Again, now we, I, I showed this to you already, but let me make a new one. And we can see that seagull, right? That is a noun phrase, determiner noun, that seagull, so that I can see that that fits. That computes this, corsage, is a verb phrase, right? Which is uh, probably it ended up getting, oh, you know what? That, it actually made the noun phrase determiner noun that. So you can see how this gets complicated, right? I'm trying to, I could diagram and run it backwards, but the point is I don't need to do that. I, all I need to do is write the grammar, and then if I have a system that generates text, it happens. So one of the nice things about working with this, and let's say you're going to do a, a exercise or try some playful experiment based on these videos that I'm making, is you could just write your grammar. You don't need to write any code, potentially, because there are a lot of existing systems that will read a grammar file and generate text based on it. And so let me give you an overview. So I'm going to show you three things. Um, the first thing I'm going to use is a grammar called tracery, a gra sorry, a grammar story grammar generation system called tracery for JavaScript. Um, written by Kate Compton at Galaxy Kate here on GitHub. And um, you can see there's a syntax to it, which I'll go over and talk about in the next video. Um, there's some nice examples. I'll just pull up. This is one of my uh, favorite ones. I don't know if this is going to, if um, this is called uh, interruption junction. So I don't, um, um, I encourage, <laughs> um, so this is, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but, um, but in, oh, you can't because I haven't, I haven't piped the sound uh, of this laptop in through the stream. But um, I need to click, I need to click. Um, so you can see this is one of the things that's interesting about working with these generative systems, whether you're doing a Markov chain or context-free grammar or combining them in some way, is really not just the algorithm and what it generates, but the context where you display those results. And I think thinking about dialogue or an interactive animated story system, there's a lot of interesting possibilities there. And if you look through Tracery's, uh, the, the GitHub repository for Tracery, you'll find a lot of links to a lot of fun and interesting projects made with these um, kind of crazy grammars. So Tracery is the number, it's the first video that I'm going to make after this one. We'll be showing you how to build and generate text with a Tracery grammar. Um, another um, uh, JavaScript library, uh, Rita.js that I have mentioned before uh, has a, just, uh, a grammar uh, object, right? It's called RI grammar. You can add rules to it. You can expand those grammars. Um, you can check if there's a rule. You can load text into it. You can remove a rule, reset. So you can see that there, this is essentially a JavaScript library that it allows you to generate those grammars. Uh, sorry, that allows you to generate text based on an existing grammar from a file, potentially. So I would encourage you to look at Tracery and the Rita library. Finally, I think for educational purposes, and ultimately, if you really want to play around with this idea of grammars and, and, and context-free grammar, that is, and customize it highly, you might want to write your own code or at least play around with my example code and modify it. For example, what if while the text is being generated, you're querying an API to grab words from, say, WordNick or something like that? You, you might be limited with using some of these existing libraries or frameworks, but if you've written all of the code yourself, you can kind of uh, add in uh, sort of features that are more um, procedurally based inside of the algorithm itself as it's running. So in that sense, the last thing that I'll do besides Tracery and Rita is I will show you how to write your own, um, uh, sorry, how to write your own um, uh, grammar object. And so I have an example that makes a context-free grammar object and that you can add, you can simply just add rules to it, whether it's coming from a file or whether it's just directly in the code. So those are the things I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a, probably two or three or four little video tutorials all about context-free grammars. Somewhere in there, I'll try to make sure I mention the whole idea of a context-sensitive grammar. Um, but I think it'll, be, it'll make more sense once we start looking at the nitty-gritty. OK? So I uh, hope you enjoyed this brief overview. Check some of the links in this video's description for more reading and materials about the background and theory of using grammars with text. And hopefully I'll see you in some of the actual coding tutorial videos next.